Dear brothers and sisters, today I will be doing a message out of Isaiah chapter 21. Going to use the contemporary English. We are the prophetic group, coat of arms ministry, the reformed Pentecostal, Anglo-Saxon, and royal part of the kingdom of God denomination. Our Sunday worship service is 11 a.m. Our Thursday night Bible study is 7 p.m. I am Bishop Archduke Dr. Robert L. Maxwell of the Prophetic Road Coat of Arms Ministry, Duke of Pomeranian Livonia, Colonel of the Royal Guard of Pomeranian Livonia, Field Marshal of the Prophetic Road Coat of Arms Ministry and House of Hansel and Knight of the Sacred to order of merits of the prophetic road coat of arms ministry house of hans owen scott dear yahweh we repent of our sins of omission and the commission and ask you to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness in the, in the name of Yeshua Yeshua Messiah Dear Almighty God, Master of the Universe, Heavenly Father, heal us mentally, physically, and spiritually. Grant us wisdom and knowledge concerning the subject that we are going to be looking at. Anoint us, empower us with the Holy Ghost. Let there be some transformation. Ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Ghost. Dear Otto 9, let my preaching and teaching be acceptable to you. We ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Ice of 21 to 1, this is a message about deserts beside the sea. Enemies from a hostile nation attack like a whirlwind from the southern desert. Ice of 21 to 2, what a horrible vision is shown to me, a vision of betrayal and destruction. Tell the Elam and media to surround and attack the Babylonians. The Lord has sworn to end the suffering they cause. Ice of 21 to 3, I'm in terrible pain like a woman giving birth. I'm shocked and hurt so much that I can't hear or see. I want to fall my head spins. I'm horrified. Early evening, my favorite time, has become a nightmare. Ice at 21 to 5 in Babylon, the high officials were having a feast. They were eating and drinking, when someone shouted, Officers, take your places. Grab your shields. Ice at 21 to 6, the Lord said to me, Send guards to find out what's going on. Ice at 21 to 7 when they see cavalry troops and columns of soldiers on donkeys and camels, tell them to be ready. Ice at 21 to 8 then a guard said, I have stood day and night on this watchtower, Lord. Ice at 21 to 9 now I see column after column of cavalry troops. Right away someone shouted, Babylon has fallen. Every idol in the city lies broken on the ground. Isa 21.10 Then I said, My people, you have suffered terribly. 
But I have a message for you from the Lord All-Powerful, the God of Israel. Isa 2111 This is a message about Juma, from the country of Seir. Someone shouts to me, God, how much longer before daylight? Isa 2112 From my guard post, I answered, morning will soon be here, but night will return. If you want to know more, come back later. Isa 2113 This is a message for Arabs who live in the barren desert in the region of Jadon. You must order your caravans. Isa 2114 To bring water for those who are thirsty. You people of Tima must bring food for the hungry refugees. Isa 2115 They are worn out and weary from being chased by enemies with swords and arrows. Isa 2116 The Lord said to me, a year from now the glory of the people of Kida will all come to an end, just as a worker's contract ends after a year. Isa 2117 Only a few of their warriors will be left with bows and arrows. This is a promise that I, the Lord God of Israel, have made. So in this chapter, we see the meat and the Persians attacking Babylon, uh, Babylonian, Babylonia, and pretty much bringing an end to their oppression and. God is punishing the Bab uh, Babylonia for their sinful, wicked ways. And God uses the instrument of the Medes and Persians to execute his judgment upon the Babylonian kingdom, which takes place which happens. They serve their purpose, so to speak. Babylonians obviously had a different agenda, and God had a different agenda for them, which he uses to execute his judgment upon Judah and the uh, 70 year Babylonian captivity. They serve their purpose, and so God uses the instrument, uh, uses the meats and the Persians as an instrument of his judgment upon the Babylonian, Babylonia, for their sinful, wicked ways. At the same time, the meats and Persians having a different uh, agenda, God using the Medes and Persians to execute his judgment upon Babylonia for their oppression, for their wickedness, their idolatry. So, and of course, God preserving his remnant. The God's elect and very elect. So what was Babylonian guilty of? Idolatry, witchcraft, temple prostitution. So, and, uh, it also points forward to the fall of the Roman Empire being punished for their wicked ways, and again, God preserving his elect 
in the New Testament destruction God punish Jerusalem punish God punish the house Judah in uh, with the destruction of the temple in the 70 AD in Jerusalem which God used to execute his judgment through the Roman Empire and then once they had, once they served their agenda once yeah, once they they, uh, they served God's agenda then the Roman Empire then gets punished for their wicked and sinful ways but at the same time God preserves his elect And throughout the millennium, God continues to use other nations, country, people, and even his church to execute judgment upon the wicked and evil during the millennium because we know from Psalm, for scripture teaches Psalm 2, Psalm 22, Psalm 72 and various other places the world will slowly and gradually be Christianized ushering in a golden age of peace and prosperity and so throughout the rest of God's unfolding uh, history all the way till his return, second advent, God will, con God continues to use other nations, countries, and people to execute his judgment upon the wicked and evil, even his church and very elect. Because Judgment is being executed and conversion at the same time through God's elect and very elect and through various other nations and countries. And they continue to serve their purpose throughout the rest of God's unfolding plan way to the future to Christ's second advent. And then, when the conquering king returns, he'll defeat the last, execute judgment on the last enemy, who is the devil, death. And at the great white throne judgment, execute his final and eternal judgment upon the unsaved and saved. Some will be ele uh, elected unto eternal life. Some will be resurrected to eternal life. Others to eternal damnation. Everyone getting what's coming to them. The good, the bad, the ugly. You'll still be saved, but your works that you do while you're in Christ on this earth right now will determine rewards and responsibilities that you have in the new heavens, new earth. Same thing, punishment and judgment upon the unsaved.
and they'll get what's coming to them, the good, the bad, the ugly, that which is fair. And that eternal separation, the lake of fire, hell, Hades, and Hades being tossed into the lake of fire for all eternity. Why we go through this period. The millennium, we are in the midst of the trials and tribulations, great and small of life until the Christianization, golden age of peace and prosperity, the conquering king returning, defeating the devil, defeating the last enemy who is the devil, death, we are to go out and do our part in God's plan and purpose to reach the lost, the hurting, etc. Spiritually dry, spiritually dry, look around. But I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, relief is coming. So, as we see, your brothers and sisters, Isaiah's fun. Kind of devastation and destruction and consequences of Babylonian Bab uh, Babylonian Babylonian idolatry and witchcraft and sorcery total decay in society and it's worse and it was worse what they were doing was really could be uh, babies being sacrificed to their idols. I mean, anyway, poetry, their religious beliefs, things that Babylonians believed in consequences were accompanied be, uh, uh, because of their actions which led to existing and God needed to wipe them out practically because sin is a stench to his nose and God wanted them stench to their Nose. God's nose. Sinful and wicked. And they had to be dealt with appropriately. Plus, they needed to be held accountable for their actions of What happened to the house of Judah and their Babylonian captivity? They had to be punished, so the Medes and Persians rose up. God used them as an instrument of his judgment. And retribution continues on. And retribution continues this day forth in the world we live in today. So anyways, point being,
sin of Amish and, and commission have devastating consequences and God brings about retribution. Justice uphold, upheld. And as the old story goes, the scale being balanced out. Because no one escapes their, their sin that they're guilty of. Oh, you may be a mafia character that works. You may be a ma, belong to the mafia. You may be belong to some kind of gang and guilty of all kinds of hideous crimes and get away with it for the rest of your life until you die. But and when death comes, they shall be held accountable at the great white throne, just a uh, throne judgment, and justice will be uh, swift. So. So sin has, of omission and commission has serious consequences. Idolatry has serious consequences. And if you look around at any country where it's a godless country, there is serious devastation that takes place in that society, injustices that take place in that society, and the scale is misbalanced, not balanced. But either way, God is still delivering retribution, and God will bring about retribution on that country. God will be re bring about retribution in their own personal and private lives. And they will be held accountable for their sins of omission and commission. They'll suffer the consequences of their sins not only in this lifetime, but in the lifetime to come because everyone is going to get what's coming to them. The good, the bad, the ugly. I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, the scale, the, the scale of justice is misbalanced in parts of your life. And I'm here to tell you that God is going to discipline you and balance out that scale. But hey, you may be saved because we are saved by grace justified by faith alone saved on the works not meritorious works but those works we do are not efficacious for salvation but we're still called to do works while we're on this planet and we will and the work we do for the Lord we will be which will determine the different rewards and punishments and responsibilities we will have in the third world age and heaven age. So your sins, whether you're saved or not saved, will create devastating consequences and you will be, you will suffer the consequences of your sinful actions of omission and commission and when I say that, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying you're earning your salvation. You're already guaranteed. But you can be rewarded. God can reward you. And some kind of sinful, wicked thing you do in your life, you can, God can take away those rewards as He sees fit. So the works we're doing on this, in the second world age and heaven age, 
is showing the very foot, uh, robes of the fabric that we sh uh, we're, our works is showing the very robes of the fabrics uh, of our uh, uh, showing the very fabric of the robes we will uh, wear in the third world age and heaven age. And the unsaved will suffer their consequences for their sinful actions. Because hell has different levels for those different levels that people will be sent to in hell. Picture Dante's Inferno as the grain of truth to Dante's Inferno. Different levels of hell to the most wicked and evil as to not as evil, but it still will be uh, eternal damnation. And we and the, and the saved will be rewarded and punished as well, which will determine the different responsibilities and rewards we'll receive in the third world age and heaven age. But none of us know what that picture looks like. We can apprehend it, but we can't fully comprehend it. But the point is, everyone gets what's coming to them, the good, the bad, the ugly. And retrib God brings about retribution, and retribution is constantly happening all the time in the world, all the time, all the time, D uh, divine providence. And that is just part of the reality and consequences of the retrobate that we all are when the fall took place and God turns around and changes that direction. So look at a godless society and you see a pretty miserable existence and whether you know it or not right now God is executing retribution upon that society and as well in your own lives and part of God's discipline to make you more like him So look around and godless societies. And it's not a pretty picture. Look around in America. Not a pretty picture. Our society in America is becoming more and more godless. And so God calls us to give relief to those in need, to bring the gospel, to transform societies. And that can only be achieved through the systematic preaching and teaching of the Word of God, because the Word of God teaches us the world will slowly and gradually be Christianized, ushered in a golden age, peace, and prosperity. And then the conquering king returns, defeats the last enemy, well, defeats the last enemy, death, who is the devil, resurrection, great white throne, judgment, some ever, uh, 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 resurrect to everlasting life, some to everlasting destruction. Well, Isaiah 21 is 13 through 
17 are to go out and as we see there reach and so God doesn't just call us to uh, saved although that is important but he also calls us to transform and change societies a gospel of conquest reaching people with the word of God the truth the light of creation the light of conscience and special revelation bringing that revelation that message to all ends of the earth or corners of the earth transforming changing societies with the word of God with the truth and we need to work together to make God's moral civil law the law of the world because call to gospel of conquest and the world is going to be slowly and gradually Christianized us in a golden age of peace and prosperity a Christian God will be worshipped on an international scale its moral and civil law will be the law of the world They'll be more saved than not. There'll be periods of progression and periods of obsession for the church and we lose some souls that will go to Hades all eternity, but they'll be more saved than what they look like right now your situation may look like to you your situation much like Isaiah 21 I'm here to tell you that God is sending relief because you are in need and God is sending relief to your life around you through your prayer, praise, and proclamation of the gospel, through your studying of the word of God, through your serving God, becoming more and more like God, God is sending relief, and he is bringing about a turnaround in your life, and many victories to come. And dear brothers and sisters, America, Europe, and various other places are becoming more and more nanny states, sickos and weirdos and psychopaths, the destruction of the nuclear family, divorce on an all-time high sex before marriage on an all-time high it's just normal you, you hear it in family TV shows and stuff about sex and having sex before marriage like it's no big thing well I'm here to tell you that God's elect God's very elect is called to change that philosophy that idol idolatry by reaching the loss with the gospel of Jesus Christ and you going out and doing your part to make this nation more uh, a strong godly nation again and more and more each day Europe Canada Alaska Mer America Europe
All time rise. Divorce on a rise. The welfare. Government programs intruding and intruding in your privacy more and more. Our privacy becoming more and more oppressive and intrusive. And that happens when God Almighty is out of the picture. And Christendom is not flourishing. You see this kind of reality with societies, governments, other countries becoming more and more oppressive. And God's elect and very elect are stuck in the middle and they don't know which way is up or down or whatever. But I'm here to tell you that God is sending his very elect and elect the light of creation, the light of conscience and special revelation into societies which will totally and radically transform and convert countries, nations and so forth to the slow, gradual pr uh, process of Christianizing the whole entire world, ushering a golden age of peace and prosperity. God is galvanizing and calvinizing his elect and very elect into action to go out to the four corners of the earth and convert countries and cities and towns and people with the truth of the word of God redemption, salvation, a relationship with God Almighty. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor. And I'm here to tell you, you may be stuck in the middle wherever you are or whatever situation, but God is here to tell you, God is sending His elected, very elect in to you through the light of creation, light of conscience, special revelation, and all various means to give you relief. God will give you relief through confession and repentance. God will give you relief through studying the Word of God, through prayer, praise, and proclamation of the Word of God. Intercessory prayer. Living godly, living a holy and righteous life. Empowering you, giving you ability, sanctifying you. And then someday you will be glorified. Relief is coming. There's a turnaround. Those dry nations, those dry countries, and those dry spiritual dry spots in America, the slowly and gradually spreading, will be watered and relief will come and spiritual restoration and renewal and the interest and the thirst for righteousness, for holiness will be accomplished and achieved. It's coming. Ah, glory. Hallelujah. God is sending relief in the nations of America, in the nations of Great Britain, in the Gentile nations, the six-day creation, God is sending a shower, a storm, to rough up some stuff and make some stuff happen and bring a turnaround, spiritual, Refreshing, watering, renewal, transformation, revival through the systematic preaching and teaching of the Word of God, through study of the Word of God, through prayer, praise, and proclamation of the Word of God.
through the light of creation, through the light of conscience. God is bringing a storm, a great storm upon those spiritually dry spots in the world from the sixth day creation, from the eighth day creation. God is making, roughing up and stirring up some stuff to bring about change through repentance, through confession, through through the regenerating, sanctifying work of the Holy Ghost. God is stirring some stuff up. God is sending wild storms, volcanoes, floods, rains, hurricanes, tornadoes, natural disasters to stir up some stuff and bring a bot, a turn around, some transformation that's gonna, that's gonna hit like a storm and radically, fanatically transform topple nations and kingdoms and empires. And bring and transform countries and societies slowly and gradually through the light of creation, the light of conscience, special revelation and the systematic preaching and teaching of the Word of God the world will slowly and gradually be Christianized, ushering in a golden age of peace and prosperity, and there'll be periods of progression, and there'll be periods of recession in, in the world. For the church, some souls will be lo lost. But there'll be more saved than not. Only one-third of mankind from beginning to end shall not be saved. The rest is God's elect and very elect. And slowly and gradually, this, will, this transformation will be achieved and God's moral and civil law will be the law of the world. And the Christian God will be worshipped on an international scale. The wealth of the wicked will be transferred to the righteous for the purpose of bringing forth the gospel of truth, the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of the empire, Kaiser Jesus Christ. And then the conquering king will return to defeat the last enemy who is death, the devil, and sin then will be then will be eradicated completely, and the resurrection will happen. Some to re resurrect to everlasting life, and some to everlasting destruction. Judgment, great white throne, judgment, the third world age and heaven age being established for all eternity. And the brothers and sisters, God will do the same in your life. Today is the day for transformation. It is transformation day. 
get ready for a turnaround. Look at Isaiah 21 in addition and say, I'm not going to be in that situation. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm not going to be in that situation. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, glory. Turn to your neighbor and say, I have to get this. Relief is coming. Spiritual dryness shall be gone. Spiritual refreshing shall indeed be established. Fertile, fresh grounds, abundant sanctification, glorification, edification, reckoning, revival. Receptitude, reconciliation, rectitude, reconciliation. <clears throat> Turn to your neighbor and say, Amen. That which is dead shall be alive again. Dear brothers and sisters, some of you been in the Isaiah 21 situation and all you have to do is say, turn me around God Almighty and surely He will. And surely he will. Relief is coming. Moreover, his empire, Jesus Christ, the Kaiser, King of the earth, prophet, savior, grand bishop, mediator, your salvation, your life. In addition, field marshal, when you fall, he picks you up and puts you on the right direction. The light of creation, the light of conscience, and special revelation shall fill the earth so. <clears throat> Dear Gentry, fortify, forbearance, temperance, strength. Edification application is so guided by the regenerating, sanctifying work of the Holy Ghost. So look out, watch the turnaround, for the Holy Ghost is correcting your ways. For the Holy Ghost is correcting your ways right now, putting you back on track. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you and I need this right now. We need this right now correction. Repent, get right with God, get back into this holiness living your destiny, your purpose, the fulfillment of the Great Commission, kingdom business, and building your destiny. Jesus Christ, character building. The Gospel of Conquest reproducing disciples of Jesus Christ. That is what he says to you, friend. Get back to learning his history, his story, the light of creation, the light of conscience. Special revelation confirms it. Get ready to be 
transmortified, radically altered. Through conversion and conversion, let his liberation sink in effectual calling being the means he uses his holy instruments which he implements and let us not forget his let us not forget his reproofing tools in addition we must not forget the whole armor of God, his sword and spear, the word of God. So march, you got your marching orders, his commands, instructions, instructions, civil and moral law. Let him have your boldness. Moreover, let abundance of boldness be produced. This is caused by the fruits of the Spirit. Go boldly to his throne, intercede through prayer, proclamation, and supplementation for you and God's elect and very elect. Know the essential doctrines of the Christian faith. So you, so you shall know what you believe and why and how to do the work of ministry. Hear, O house of Israel, house of Judah, descendants of Esau, Hagar, and the sixth day creation. If you be in Christ Jesus, look out. You are either of the elect nature, on the other hand, not. Which one are you? Then apply this message in your life today. Its wonders at work, his wonders cease not to be, cease not, his wonders cease not to amaze. God's elect, those who believe, whether you be Anglo-Saxon Israel, whether you be of the royal house of Judah, whether you be a Gentile, six-day creation, or Esau, alternative, alternatively Hagar, you are either of the elect or not. That is so how it is that is so how it is turn to your neighbor and say listen up dear friends there is one thing you can count on dear friends there is one thing you can count on Every now and then you shall find yourself in an Isaiah 21 situation. And when you do, the Heavenly Father will pick you up again, redirect you in the right direction. Dieser 21 Doppelpunkt 1 Weissagung über die Meereswüste, wie ein Sturm die Mittagslande, braust es daher aus der Wüste, aus dem schrecklichen Land. Dieser 21 Doppelpunkt 2 mehr ist einer inhaltsschwere Offenbarung kundgetan worden. Der Räuber raubt, der Zerstörer zerstört. Brecht auf, ihr Perser, hebt die Belagerung an, ihr Meder. Denn alles von ihr verursachte Seufzen will ich stillen. 
ISA 21, Doppelpunkt 3, darum sind meine Lenden voll Schmerz. Wehen haben mich ergriffen, gleich den Wehen einer Mutter. Ich krümme mich vor dem, was ich hören muss. Bin erschrocken von dem, was ich sehen muss. ISA 21, Doppelpunkt 4, mein Herz klopft. Beben hat mich überfallen, die Dämmerung, die mir lieb ist, hat er mir in Schrecken verwandelt. ISA 21, Doppelpunkt 5, man deckt den Tisch, stellt die Wache aus, isst und trinkt. Auf ihr Fürsten, salbet den Schild. ISA 21, Doppelpunkt 6, denn also hat mir der Herr befohlen, gehe, bestelle den Wächter, er soll anzeigen, was er sieht. ISA 21, Doppelpunkt 7, da sei Reiter, Doppelgespanne, Reiter auf Eseln und Reiter auf Kamelen, und er beobachtete scharf, mit größter Aufmerksamkeit. ISA 21, Doppelpunkt 8, und er schrie wie ein Löwe, Herr, ich stehe täglich immer auf meiner Warte und bin alle Nächte auf meinem Posten gestanden. ISA 21, Doppelpunkt 9, siehe, da kam ein Reiter, ein Mann mit einem Doppelgespann, der hob an und sprach, gefallen. Gefallen ist Babel, und alle ihre Götzen wieder hat er zu Boden geschmettet. Isa 21 Uhr 10 Uhr mein zerdroschenes Volk, mein Tänensong. Was ich von dem Herrn der Herrscher, dem Gott Israels, gehört habe, das verkündige ich euch. Isa 21 Uhr 11 Weissagung über Duma, außer ruft man mir zu, Wächter, ist die Nacht bald hin? Wächter, ist die Nacht bald hin? Isa 21 Uhr 12 der Wächter spricht, der Morgen ist angebrochen, und doch ist es noch Nacht. Wenn ihr fragen wollt, so fragt, kommt bald wieder. Isa 21.13 Uhr Weissagung über Arabin, in der Wildnis von Arabin müsst ihr übernachten, ihr Karawanen der Bedaniter. Isa 21.14 Uhr bringet dem durstigen Wasser entgegen, ihr Bewohner des Landes Demar. Bietet den Flüchtlingen Brot an. Isa 21.15 Uhr, denn vor den Schwertern sind sie geflohen, vor dem gezückten Schwerte, vor dem gespannten Bogen und vor dem harten Krieg. Isa 21.16 Uhr, denn also hat der Herr zu mir gesprochen. Noch ein Jahr, wie die Jahre eines Tagelöhners, so ist alle Herrlichkeit Kedas dahin. Isa 21.17 Uhr, und der übrig gebliebenen tapfern Bogenschützen Kedas werden sehr wenige sein. Der Herr, der Gott Israels, hat es geredet. Isaiah 21 to 110. Babylon was a flat country, abundantly watered. The destruction of Babylon, so often prophesied of by Isaiah, was typical of the destruction of the great foe of the New Testament church, foretold in the Revelation. To the poor oppressed captives it would be welcome news, to the proud oppressors it would be grievous. Let this check vain mirth and sensual pleasures that we know not in what heaviness the mirth may end. Here is the alarm given to Babylon, when forced by Cyrus. An ass and a camel seem to be the symbols of the Medes and Persians. Babylon's idols shall be so far from protecting her that they shall be broken down. True believers are the corn of God's floor, hypocrites are but as chaff and straw, with which the wheat is now mixed, but from which it shall be separated. The corn of God's floor must expect to be threshed by afflictions and persecutions. God's Israel of old was afflicted. Even then, God owns it is his still. In all events concerning the church, past, present, and to come, we must look to God, who has power to do anything for his church, and grace to do everything that is for her good. Isaiah 21 colon 11 12. God's prophets and ministers are as watchmen in the city in a time of peace, to see that all is safe as watchmen in the camp in time of war, to warn of the motions of the enemy. After a long sleep in sin and security, it is time to rise, to awake out of sleep. We have a great deal of work to do, a long journey to go, it is time to be stirring. After a long dark night is there any hope of the day dawning? What tidings of the night? What happens tonight? We must never be secure. But many make curious inquiries of the watchmen. They would willingly have nice questions solved, or difficult prophecies interpreted, but they do not seek into the state of their own souls, about the way of salvation, and the path of duty. The watchman answers by way of prophecy. There comes first a morning of light, and peace, and opportunity, but afterward comes a night of trouble and calamity. 
If there be a morning of youth and health, there will come a night of sickness and old age. If a morning of prosperity in the family, in the public, yet we must look for changes. It is our wisdom to improve the present morning, in preparation for the night that is coming after it. Inquire, return, come. We are urged to do it quickly, for there is no time to trifle. Those that return and come to God, will find they have a great deal of work to do, and but little time to do it in. Isaiah 21 colon 13 17 The Arabians lived in tents, and kept cattle. A destroying army shall be brought upon them, and make them an easy prey. We know not what straits we may be brought into before we die. Those may know the want of necessary food who now eat bread to the full. Neither the skill of archers, nor the courage of mighty men, can protect from the judgments of God. That is poor glory, which will thus quickly come to nothing. Thus hath the Lord said to me, and no word of his shall fall to the ground. We may be sure the strength of Israel will not lie. Happy are those only whose riches and glory are out of the reach of invaders. All other prosperity will speedily pass away. Jesaja 21, Doppelpunkt 1, 10 Babylon war ein flaches Land, reichlich bewässert. Die Zerstörung von Babylon, so oft prophezeiten von Jesaja, war typisch für die Zerstörung der großen Feind der neutestamentlichen Kirche, in der Offenbarung vorhergesagt. Es wäre für die armen, unterdrückten Gefangenen erfreuliche Nachricht. Zu den stolzen Unterdrückern wäre schmerzlich. Lassen Sie diese Kontrollkästchen eitel Frohsinns und sinnliche Freuden, die wir wissen nicht, in welche schwere Gefühl des Frohsinns enden kann. Hier ist der Alarm nach Babylon gegeben, wenn durch Cyrus gezwungen. Ein Esel und ein Kamel scheinen die Symbole der Meder und Berser. Babylons Idole werden so weit schützen ihr, wie sie unterteilt werden soll. Wahre Gläubige sind das Korn von Gottes Wort, Heuchler sind aber als Spreu und Stroh, die jetzt vom Weizen gemischt wird, sondern von dem Biss wird getrennt werden. Das Korn von Gottes Wort muss voraussichtlich durch Bedrängnisse und Verfolgungen gemäht werden. Des Gottes Israels wurde von Alten gedrängt. Gott besitzt selbst, dann ist es seine noch. Auf jeden Fall über die Kirche, Vergangenheit, Gegenwart und zu kommen müssen wir Gott schauen. Die macht irgendetwas für seine Kirche und Gnade zu tun, alles, was ist für sie gut zu tun hat. Jesaja 21, Doppelpunkt 11, 12 Gottes Propheten und Minister sind als Wächter in der Stadt in einer Zeit des Friedens, zu sehen, dass alles sicher ist. Als Wächter im Camp in der Zeit des Krieges, um die Bewegungen des Feindes warnen. Nach einem langen Schlaf in Sünde und Sicherheit ist es Zeit zu steigen, um aus dem Schlaf zu erwachen. Wir haben viel Arbeit vor uns, eine lange Reise zu gehen. Es ist Zeit zu rühren sein. Nach einer langen dunklen Nacht gibt es Hoffnung auf das Tag dämmern. Welche Botschaft der Nacht? Was passiert in der Nacht? Wir müssen nie sicher sein. Aber viele machen neugierige Anfragen der Watchmen. Sie hätten gern nett Fragen gelöst oder schwierigen Prophezeiungen interpretiert, aber sie wollen nicht in den Zustand der eigenen Seelen, über den Weg der Erlösung und den Weg der Pflicht. Die Wächter antworten durch Prophezeiung. Zuerst kommt eine Morgengelegenheit, Licht und Frieden, aber danach kommt eine Nacht Probleme und Unglück. Wenn es ein Morgen der Jugend und Gesundheit, es wird kommen eine Nacht von Krankheit und Alter, wenn ein Morgen der Wohlstand in der Familie, in der Öffentlichkeit, müssen noch wir Änderungen gesucht. Es ist unsere Weisheit vorhanden morgen, in Vorbereitung für die Nacht zu verbessern, die nach ihm kommen wird. Erkundigen Sie sich, zurückkommen. Wir sind aufgefordert, die Arbeiten schnell, denn es keine Zeit, Kleinigkeit gibt. Jene, die zurück und kommen zu Gott, finden, sie haben viel zu tun und aber wenig Zeit zu tun. Jesaja 21, Doppelpunkt 13, 17 Die Araber lebten in Zelten und Winde gehalten. Eine vernichtende Armee auf sie gebracht werden, und machen sie eine leichte Beute. Wir wissen nicht, welche Straße wir eingebracht werden können, bevor wir sterben. Wir können weiß, Mangel an notwendigen Lebensmitteln, die jetzt voll Brot essen. Weder die Fähigkeit der Bogen schützen, noch den Mut der mächtigen Männer, kann vor die Strafgerichte Gottes schützen. Das ist die schlechte Ruhe, die so schnell nichts kommen wird. So hat der Herr zu mir gesagt, und kein Wort von ihm auf den Boden fallen. Wir können sicher sein, die Stärke Israels nicht liegen wird. 
Glücklich sind die einzigen, deren Reichtum und Ehre sind außerhalb der Reichweite der Invasoren. Alle anderen Wohlstand wird schnell vergehen.